And she now has to take on the world champion Shane Bamboni, who came through a real scare earlier today, as we'll discuss. He's back on the table now, looking to claim a place in winner's qualification. So what sort of chances she got of making an impact here, Jeremy? And what are going to be the deciding factors in terms of how this match goes? Well, of course, the start always has a, a big part to do with anyone that's looking at an underdog situation. And I think that that match earlier that Shane played doesn't do Margaret any favors in this match, to be honest with you. I don't, not, not that Shane is one that will ever let up, but he realizes that these players are talented, and the way the break is, the way the break is, it can allow them opportunities to get into the match if they get comfortable. So I think Shane's going to keep that, you know, from getting any easy openings uh, for Margaret to get started. I think Shane's going to be on his toes. I mean, he, like I said, he normally is on his toes, but it, it didn't do Margaret any favor, Shane having that scare earlier. Well, let's talk about that for anyone who didn't see it. He was playing Joey Tate, and Tate was leading 5-1. The young American player, Van Boning, turned it round. It was 7-all, and it looked as though Tate was going to lead 8-7, and then had a moment that he's just going to find it so hard to get over. He potted the 5 instead of the 4, which was still on the table. Van Boning ended up winning that rack. There was still a chance for Tate in the next rack at 8-7 down. As Van Boning scratched from the break, but Tate potted one ball, hooked himself in doing so, couldn't extricate himself from the situation, and left Van Boning a chance from which he closed it out at 9-7. It really was the match of the tournament so far. Yeah, and Margaret, I watched some of her match, watching some of the other American players earlier, and she played super solid, really smart, really good stroke, by the way, can move the cue ball, can do things, so... Again, with some opportunity, I think she'll take advantage of it. I think it's just a, a Shane Van Boning that's just going to be on top of his game after that last scare. And very swiftly, he takes the opening racket to lead 1-0. You might notice she's listed there as Margaret Fefalova Steyer because she's married to Tyler Steyer, U.S. Moscone Cup player. Now some scores from this round, Eklund Kachi has regained the initiative against Vitaly Patsura of Ukraine, pulling away from 2-2 to lead 5-2. Seven all now between Petri Makinen and Wu Ku Lin. Tim De Reiter, not sure we confirmed that one for you, but he has beaten Zaid Al-Sharifi of Syria by nine racks to two. Mickey Kraus has won 9-6 against Chris Alexander and will now play last year's runner-up a Lucius Yap who beat Mark Vidal Claremont 9-4. And we can confirm Darren Appleton has won 9-4 against Riku Rompainen and will now play Roberto Gomez. 1-0 here. Well, we're going to see a safety here and probably a very good one underneath the green six and the pink four, banging the two away. Should be a very difficult kick shot situation for Margaret for her first time at the table and I'm not sure what the worry is, just maybe deciding what's the best way. This type of shot, remember, you always want the cue ball going slowly in there. See how it wasn't moving fast, of course, stay in control. And now Margaret, who knee deep to start her campaign in round two, round one of the winner's side. Notice she's got an unfamiliar flag there, you might say. Well, that's because she's playing under the banner of authorized neutral athlete, as all the players from Belarus, her country, and Russia are this week for obvious reasons. She's from the Belarusian capital, Minsk, and is 25 years of age. Yeah, and she's improved a lot. I saw her play a lot of good push-out situations in the last match. Not a lot of nice safeties, good kicks. So she's going to have to bend this a bit to have any chance. She could try to tie up the four and the six. I think that's maybe what she's looking at now. Very difficult, though. I don't know if she can get thin enough on the four to really do anything with that. So she's going to try and maybe edge the six up on top, maybe.
Yeah, just there wasn't a whole lot to improve her situation or even more so make Shane's ball in hand situation more difficult. Yeah, just a horrible situation to be in for your first shot of the match. You come to the table and you've got an impossible conundrum to figure out. I always think someone in this situation should just look at it as, as a free hit, really, and nobody's expecting anything of her in this match. We've seen a lot of players lose matches 9-0, 9-1, so even if that was to happen, no disgrace at all. And if she can get those thoughts into her head, then maybe she can do a bit better than that. But she's got to get some chances first. Yeah, that's the problem I think she's going to face. I think Margaret's going to going to perform when she gets her chances. It's just a matter of what SBB allows. And I think Margaret definitely, you know, she's got her game face on. You can tell, but I think she's she knows she's here to soak this in and and try and gain some experience. Not a player, you know, there's you know legitimately that's how great our sport has become. Probably, really, I think 40 guys that can win this tournament, 40 players, you know. But there's a, a lot of them here that, of course, cashing is great, getting that match time experience, trying to improve their game, and, and looking forward to future U.S. Opens. Shane Van Boning has done well in past U.S. Opens, winning five of them, and he's won the first couple of racks here. Shane, of course, reigning world nine ball champion, and him and Filler have already been selected off of points to their respective Moscone Cup teams. Yeah, and that's a situation I think we'll be talking about a lot as we get towards the business end of the event, because another two places to be decided on both teams this week, and then the captain's picks, Jeremy. What a task that's going to be for you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think both captains have have uh, situations to to kind of get through in that regard, but we're definitely going to have some drama this week. I think in more places than one, in my opinion. Whether you think about rankings, what do you think about, you know, I did a podcast, you know, several weeks ago talking about the Moscone and the players and, you know, what players are going to make their argument this week, you know, make it stick out in my head or Alex's head to say that they should be on the team. Do you find yourself slipping into it during the year, thinking, OK, if these guys make it, maybe I'll pick these guys. But then again, if one of those guys gets in, maybe somebody else will come into the reckoning. Is it hard not to keep thinking about all the possibilities all year long? Yeah, it is because it's, you know, it's important to us um, as Americans and I'm sure the Euros. It's a huge event. Um, you think of combinations of players, you know, a few years ago, the way it came down, um, I didn't want two rookies on the team at the same time, even though I think Tyler and, and Chris could have played together at that time, but I thought best not to. So, you know, Corey Duell got in that fifth spot, I thought, because of, because of that. So there's all kinds of combinations you think of. Well, we said Fefalova needed chances. She had one there. It was a bank shot, but wasn't able to make it. Yeah, that looked a little 50-ish, maybe. I didn't know if he was trying to come for the side, and now he's got a little bit of a funny angle, even though he's close to it. Now, the good thing is, I think he can hit with a top English. Well, he's going to try and get to the short pocket on the three. I thought he may come between the seven, eight off of one round, play the three up long. He's going to pound it. But Shane loves that, loves to unleash the cue. As we've said, he is the reigning world champion, having at last won it for the first time back in April of this year. And he beat the then world champion, Ronnie Elcano, to win this title for the first time at the age of just 24, 15 years ago now. Yeah, Between the then and 2016, he ended up winning a total of five times. So tied with Earl Strickland, and this has been the narrative at so many US Opens in recent years, every time since then, in fact, can this be the year when he breaks the record and becomes a six-time champion? Yeah, his last win, super impressive. I think it was Josh Filler <laughs> that put him on the, on the loser side before he came back through. I only know that because he beat me in the fifth, sixth position <laughs> that year. 
Um, but yeah, Shane's pretty amazing. He ended up beating Jason Shaw in a close one to get to the final. And Chang Young Lin to lift that title. Yeah, and I think in his five wins, he's, I think he's beaten Dennis Akulo twice in the final and also Ronnie Ocano once. So the Filipinos have not liked SVB in the final of that U.S. Open. Tricky here. I think he can get around the six and the nine to float in a position down the table, but it's going to be touchy. like just the top with the hair right gets him around the six and past the nine I thought pretty routinely he sees something else which is probably more accurate than what I see he is at the table and the greatest player in the world the last 15 years oh. every time you say something like that <laughs> they go and play one of the worst shots you'll ever see from them He's meant to be your mate, JJ. Don't say things like that about him. Yeah, he got very involved in the cue ball, and like I said, I, I didn't really see an issue. He wanted to go into the six and try and hold position on the five that way. And just caught that inner point going in, and as the week goes on, the pockets are going to tighten up, Michael. Just to pick up on what you were saying, four of his five U.S. Open finals have actually been against players from the Philippines. The first one that I mentioned against... Ocano, a couple against Rocolio as well. Lee Van Corteza as well in there. So the last one against Chang Young Lin, the only one that wasn't against one of the always strong Philippines contingent. Yeah, and if you look through the years in the finals of the U.S. Open, the Filipino players, there's, there's quite a few Filipinos that could have that title. Jose Perica was beaten two or three times in the final. Efren was beaten in the final before he finally snapped it off. I don't think, I think Alex was maybe beaten in the final before he he won it also. Did he lose to Ralph Suquet, I believe? Yeah, Yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah. He won it three years later. Right. So I remember watching that. I believe it was a race to 15 in the final that year. It may have been 13, but... Yeah, the one against Suke was 13-11. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the present day, Margaret Fefalova Steyer, as she's known these days, has an opportunity here to do what so many players we've seen coming in as the underdog haven't managed to do, and that's get a rack on the board early on. And of course, that can be so important in setting the tone. So often in these big open events, you see players so far behind that by the time they do get a chance, under so much pressure, they can't make the most of it. Yeah, well, Margaret, what I saw, kept it very simple in her first match, which I love. But then when she needed to come with a shot, she could work the cue ball, no problem. So I think she'll get out here, and we'll see what the break shot does for her in game number, game number four. sports if any where you can see women competing on such an equal basis with men and registering good wins over them Pia Filler Kelly Fisher and others have done it so much in recent years Very good signs from Margaret Feffel over. The first pot she had a chance to go at, she missed, but it was a bank shot, wasn't guaranteed by any means. When she got that chance, she took her time, looked very comfortable with the situation, 
He's very pleased with the position she's now in in this match because already she's got one on the board and only trails 2-1. Now let's have a look at some of the other matches. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who's been doing so well this year and of course got to the UK Open final in one of these style of events. Well, he's 7-3 down against Yera Virtoranta of Finland. Another Finnish player, Petri Mackinen on the hill against Wu Kulin. That one is 8-7. Eklund Kachi really struggling to shake off Vitaly Patsura. He's leading 5-4 at the moment. Viktor Zielinski 4-0 up on Corey Jewell. Daniel Massiol now has a 5-3 lead over Jeff Beckley. And while Margaret is playing here, her husband Tyler Steyer is in action over on table 10, but he's lost the opener to Lucas for Casso Werner. Well, Lucas, another fine young player from Connecticut, had a nice win after trailing earlier. Gets one of the, of course, always strong Taiwanese, uh, excuse me, Chinese Taipei players. Tricky shot here on the one, hard to pass it, but I guess you just have to roll forward to take another long shot on the two. The three's near, though, so she can get this one down. What did you make of the technique there, JJ, for our first look at her break? Oh, it was nothing wrong with it at all. I saw her break the balls pretty effectively in her first match today, making the one on the side quite often. She's got to make probably a little adjustment with the slicker equipment on the main tables, but I'll tell you with Ruiz trailing seven to three. Talked about Ruiz at the European Open that uh, nice shot there and a nervy shot just getting by that six. Now long and straight on the two. Good thing the three goes in the side, but nothing easy. But I talked about Ruiz because I think he's similar to Filler in a, in a sense to where he really took advantage of the break format before and kept a lot of pressure on his opponent, you know, running a lot of racks. And I think there are some players that are going to have to make a little more of an adjustment, mentally maybe, more than anything with the new break format, even with a guy that's, a, you know, top five in the world right now. Good signs there in that shot as well that was nicely, confidently cued. Oh, yeah, she's not going to, I mean, if she gets some decent starters, you know, and gets in position with the cue ball, um, she's not going to miss the hangers, I don't think, overall. She's been a gold medalist at the European Championships. There's a recent win over Kelly Fisher to her name. Well, I don't know if you can tell. I can kind of tell without, you know, really knowing Margaret that well, but watching her earlier also, she gets very involved in herself, which is a, a key sign and a key component to not only winning as an underdog, but playing your best pool. Well, what do you mean by that, just in terms of being focused? Yeah, I mean, you're never going to really just lose the moment, you know, that you're in. But, you know, when you, when you train a certain way, you know, getting into your process and your routine, it kind of just makes you kind of dilutes a little bit of what the moment's about and who you're playing. And some shots early can help that, of course, to be able to get into that routine. They both won 9-7 in the previous round. Van Boney's match against Joey Tate we've talked about. Hefalova came through 9-7 against Stephen Folan, who made a real fight of it towards the finish. But you'll notice how simple she keeps it, not trying to get too close to her work. Just gain that angle to move the cue ball easily around the eight. Coming two rails right at the seven. And she's looking at maybe drawing this ball. I thought she would definitely run the cue ball. Maybe the tip's rising right now. Oh, she cheated the pocket nicely. Now she definitely has a two rail angle to run the cue ball for the eight in the upper left. Got a little bit into the cue ball, so 
kind of stunned off that ball maybe to get a little better um, and maybe not use as much side spin on the shot. She could have ran the ball with like a high right, kind of using the spin to come out two rails versus stunning. And nothing wrong with either one of those. Just sometimes the stun on the slick felt, it draws a little bit more than you think, and it almost got the best of Margaret right there. Ideally would have liked another roll or two there, but I think it's still back her to make it 2-2 here. Yeah, absolutely. Smart young lady. She's not going to hit this with a ton of pace. Just a nice medium stroke. Yeah, and that's a run out from the break. So from 2-0 down, Margaret Fefalova Steyer has leveled against the world champion Shane Van Boning at 2 all. Keeping an eye on FSR, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Been talking about that race for those two further Moscone Cup spots to be confirmed at the end of this tournament. He's the front runner in those standings at the moment, behind Joshua Filler, who's already secured the first place on the team. Well, Sanchez Ruiz trailing 7 4 against Yera Vitoranta of Finland. And Petri Mackinen, also from Finland, now on the hill at 8 7 against Wu Kun Lin. Corey Jewell. He's got off the mark. He's won the fifth rack, but trails Victor Zielinski 4-1. And Chang Yun Lin, as we've said, was runner-up to Shane Van Boning in this championship six years ago. And he's leading 3-0 against Sandra Kant of Estonia. Uh, nine ball flying towards the side. I think we're going to get some of that from Margaret, you know, in comparison to her opponent. We don't really expect... Too many dry breaks or a little bit thin there on the one from Margaret, as you would from Shane. But, you know, the break rule is another interesting thing just because you look at the Moscone Cup, for instance, they've announced now that we will play the Moscone under this break format. And I certainly can't speak for Alex. Um, but, I mean, when it comes to your picks, you know, if you have, like, you know, four guys in mind that has, has a chance to have one of those two picks... I think the break format can certainly sway in that decision a little bit, not only for the break shot itself, but understanding there's a lot more tactical pool involved now. Well, we love it at the Moscone, don't we? The tactical exchanges with so much hinging on it and the crowd getting involved. Yeah. The epic rack that you had, Jeremy, when you had to step in and uh, against David Alcady on... Night three, I think it was. Yeah. At Alexandra Palace last year. Yeah, that was, uh, I'll never forget that one for many reasons, of course. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think as, as spectators and fans, we don't give them enough credit on appreciating some things and, and again, getting into the decision making of the game. And I think that's what fans want to get involved in a little more often. And, you know, if we break in the ones over the corner, well, not a whole lot of decision-making going on on that. He's going to try and move the cue ball out a bit. He wants to gain an angle to try and create something on the four, and I don't think he got where he wanted. He would have liked to have gotten below it, kind of like on the angle the eight's at, to where he could come one row into the four-nine. And I'll tell you, I think Tyler played a really solid match in his opener. Watched quite a bit of that after trailing early as a big favorite. But I think he's going to have a close one with Lucas. I was very impressed with the way Lucas handled a little deficit early in that first match and played very strong from there. And he's leading Steyer 2-0 now. Yeah, well, Lucas, you know... We had a big junior event at the International a few years ago. He played incredible to win it. I don't think he's probably in the junior event here, which we haven't talked about much, but we will as the week goes on. I think he's a little out of, out of that age, but certainly a, a kid and a young player that's 
looking to make some noise on the professional level. And you notice that's the exact kind of shot I was talking about earlier with Roberto. You notice how he kind of smoothed it up the table. Off that full angle, if you really get into it, it actually doesn't travel as far. And now looking maybe for a cross corner bank. He's got a little bit of a big pocket with the six there. Couple different ways you can shoot it. You can shoot it with a high ball, kind of crossing it over. You can draw it, like with low right. I think Shane doesn't really want to slow roll this, though, so I think he'll have a little pace on this. Nice shot. Oh, I thought that would creep in. Yeah, I think even after it had stopped, he was standing there looking hopefully. Yeah, now Margaret, who I would suspect probably pretty handy with the jump cue. Her husband, of course, very good with the jump cue. And that just kind of shows you after one day the tables are changing a little bit. And she's really got to go for the jump. The kick is a possibility, but most likely on that type of kick shot, you know, if you do make it, usually follow it in with the cue ball. So. Yeah, I caught the six first anyways. Yeah, it was a tough spot to be in. And now it looks pretty much guaranteed. Van Boning is going to regain the lead. Yeah, this is the out you want for the title here when nerves are super high. Hard to mess this one up. Everything kind of just leads towards the next ball. Speaking of the title, we were talking earlier about the fact that he's tied for the record at the moment with Earl Strickland on five U.S. Open wins. Neither of them has ever lost a U.S. Open final. Five out of five in those. And in fact, Van Boning, every time he's got to the semis, he's gone on to win it. Yeah, well, there's been certain players in their career, if, once they get to the finals, Earl definitely one of them. If you look at his career, unbelievable in the finals. They always talked about, of course, Mike Siegel in that kind of situation. Shane Van Boning, certainly the same. So Fefalova. I was put in a tough position with the jump shot. It didn't work out for her. And from there, there was a real inevitability about what happened next. So Van Boning regains the lead at 3-2. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is charging back well. He's only one behind now against Yera Vitoranta of Finland. That's 7-6. And Petri Makinen, also of Finland, has now won 9-7 against Wu Kun Lin. Eklund Kachi in a real battle with Vidali. Patsura, it's taking a long time, and it's 5-all now. Corey Jewell has won two in a row to close to 4-2 down against Victor Zielinski. Sandra Kant is off the mark against Chang Young Lin. He's taken the fourth rack. He's now 3-1 down. Daniel Masiol of Poland, two away from victory, leading Jeff Beckley 7-4. Omar El Shaheen, former world championship runner-up, as we always describe him, has won the first rack against Ernesto Dominguez, who was the last player through to this round. Loho Sum, World Masters finalist, has won the first against Juan Carlos Exposito. Thomas Kaplan going well at 4-1 against Cash Keaton. And Chris Reinhold is 2-1 up against Thomas Haas. And just to update a couple of those scores, Daniel Massiel now on the hill at 8-4 against Beckley. And Victor Zielinski has gone three clear again against Corey Jewell. That one is 5-2. Yeah, Chris Reinhold played a super solid match in his first. Of course, he was a pretty big favorite, but talked about him yesterday to a few people. I expect him to have a good U.S. Open here. I think he's in a good place with his swing. Uh, I think he's kind of taken some pressure off of himself a little bit. And uh, 
I wouldn't be surprised you see like a final 16 or final 32 or, or even better from Chris, believe it or not. Yeah, well, he's someone we've known about for a long time. You showed a lot of faith in him, of course, in a Moscone Cup sense, and he's done reasonably well, I think, in that environment. But we're waiting for him to really come through and deliver on that potential in an event like this. He's fallen a long way short of it so far, to be fair. Yeah, and I think, you know, Chris kind of sometimes, you know, in the midst of a match, doubts himself and understands that maybe he doesn't know all the shots. But you got to leave that doubt behind. You know, that execution will overcome a little bit of a mental... Uh, you know, you're not going to make that bad of a decision is my point. You know, you might not make the perfect one, of course, but it isn't going to be a terrible decision. So he's just got to key on his execution and rely on that. I think if he does make the team again, he's got to change his surname again, and then he'll have played in three Moscones with three different names. was known as Chris Robinson, of course, when he made his debut in Coventry back in 2020. The COVID Moscone, I think you described it as, Jeremy. Yeah, and he, you know, he, he played well there and, and you know, just kind of like last year had one big miss that kind of got him a little negative, not negative, but just maybe losing a little confidence. Yeah, and that was identified as a big moment in the whole thing, wasn't it? Sandra Comte there looking to get back to 3-2 down against Chang Young Lin. Good to see Chang here. I know he's he's been... You know, during pandemic, he actually started playing quite a bit of Chinese eight ball, actually even changed his fundamental a little bit uh, accordingly. All right, Shane. He's getting that cue ball to drop below the rack, so that's a little concerning, but really focusing on making that one in the side. Can he get to the top of the two on the left side of his left side of the two? If so, I'm sure he brings the cue ball up behind that wedge of balls. That being the four, five, and six. Just lays the two behind the eight, nine. Real natural here. This could get nasty for Margaret. Now, if this nestles up on one of these balls, which I would have been a little more aggressive myself, but I guess securing the snooker is always good. And the only reason I say be a little more aggressive is it laid there to do so. The two is always going to be behind the 8-9, and you had three balls to really nestle the cue ball up on. Now a very doable kick. Oh, didn't expect that. Shane's going to have to play a pretty nice shot getting from the three to the four. You can see it pretty nicely covered up by the five and six. Good thing three's near. So I wonder if he's going to run the cue ball for an angle on the three in the side. Or I'd probably just lay up for the corner, but Shane doesn't mind this at all. Now he can kind of drop the cue ball with a little draw stroke for the, a little cut on the four. And I think 2023 is going to, oh, he's gotten super thin on this. This is like really thin. I think he'd take a second look at this. Okay. No problem for SVB. But I think 2023 is going to give us even more, Michael. I think there's a lot of players for one reason or another couldn't make events. Maybe testing the waters to see what some things look like with some new events but realizing that it's heading in a great direction and 2023 is going to bring even more great players out. I think we're going to be hearing about the full schedule for next year in the coming days, and I think it's going to be an even bigger one than this year. Shane Van Boning has done very well consistently throughout this year's schedule. And for the second time in a match, in this match, he's won two racks in a row now. And he goes two clear once again at 4-2. Now, just to bring you up to date about what's going to be following this, next up on this table, we're going to have some matches from the loser's side. And on table one, it's going to be Riku Rompain and against Payne McBride, so a transatlantic clash of the youngsters there. 
And over on two, it'll be Dimitri Youngo and Ki Wu. They'll be the next matches on. Now, I've got to say, I'm very impressed and more than a little envious of Jake Asby from Matchroom because this is the sort of stat I normally love coming up with. USA have only won the World Cup of Pool on one occasion, which is a bit surprising, and it was 14 years ago today. Shane Van Boning was on the team. So back in 2008, on this day, they had that victory. Do you remember who his partner was? Rodney Morris. Absolutely. The Rocket, former US Open 9 vault champion. 1996, 95, 95, I believe. Actually won two pro events in a row, which was so hard to do back in the day. Still incredibly hard to do these days as well. Yeah, it was 96 Morris won the US 96, Open. 96, yeah. yeah. Beat Efren Reyes in the middle of that run of three final defeats in a row for Reyes. Yeah, 96. He had won a tournament in Puerto Rico the week before, or maybe it was two weeks before, but the Rocket was such a unique player as... You ever got to see him in his what I considered his real prime right there in the mid 90s? Um, just something special and very unique. Uh, something about them lefties. Okay, I understood why she wanted to put some speed into that. Still kind of felt like maybe rolling that. I understand there was some risk both ways. Now, I think there's a one-two combination. She should definitely attack. And Michael, I have to do all that by memory, by the way. I don't have the computer right in front of me. Oh, now you're giving away the secrets here. Some of it you remember, but it's nice to have... Uh, Absolutely. Nice to have a comfort blanket there. Yeah, a little just to check things. confirmation. Okay, funny shot here, not, I mean, a very makeable bank, but very hard to gain position. Let's see if she banks the one up table. There's some other safety options here, but this is okay. Uh, you need to get the snooker in that spot, though. That's the difference in professional pool and that next level or two down. As the great players, even though there's nine foot of distance, there's not a ton of options. They usually find something that works. She's clipping the one into the three, bringing the cue ball all the way down by the six, I believe. Trying to use the nine. Another part of the game that obviously you can't win five U.S. Opens without having that part, but I don't think Shane gets enough credit at times for the tactical side of things. That's what often happens when you're so good at the attacking side of the game. People almost overlook that you've got the other skills. But as you say, you've got to bring the whole package. Okay, she should go for the long rail bank here. She hit the right side of it. It's not going to work out. It's not going to worry about getting close to the three here. Well, played a little more into it than I thought. Didn't want to roll the ball. If he rolls it, cue ball's about in the same position, believe it or not. Just one rail. Needs a little draw here to get the proper angle on the four to easily stay on the five. Now Shane, he, he may drop to the bottom rail just because he's such a good spot to do so, just slightly underneath the five. Now if there's any risk on a shot like that, you just stay above it and play from there. But when he's in such a good position, that natural angle from underneath makes things very easy. Speaking of easy, I think he'll like the fact that it hasn't all been easy for him in this match. I mean, what does he gain out of going out there and winning 9-0, 9-1, other than getting into the next round? The fact that he's coming up against an opponent who looks comfortable out there and has posed some questions to him, that's just how he wants it, so long as he wins in the end, of course. Yeah, absolutely, and unique pressures will tell you a lot about yourself. 
a unique pressure he had in the last match against an up-and-coming junior. And Shane probably being one of his heroes, I'm sure. But it's not like being down or against uh, another player, right? And let's not forget on his way to the world title early in the year. Just think of all those close finishes he had. It was actually the, the final against Alban Ocean was one of his more comfortable matches. Anyway, he's three clear for the first time at 5-2. Corey Jewell has just won the ninth rack against Victor Zielinski, but he's trailing 6-3. Omar Al Shaheen absolutely flying 4 0 up against Ernesto Dominguez. Chang Young Lin, one of those players, in fact, who gave Van Boning a real close one on the way to the world title in April, is 5 1 in front now in that match we looked in on against Sandra Conte. Daniel Maciol on the hill at 8 5 against Jeff Beckley. Still 7 all between Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Yera Vitoranta. Thomas Kaplan with a 5-1 lead over Cash Keaton. 5-2 here to the world champ. Another American player who's made some noise in the U.S. Open before. Doesn't play full-time. Donnie Mills, I think, about to tee off in a, a winner's side match. Play Mills Foyan. Yeah, that's a big test. And I'm sure those two have played before. I think Donnie did finish maybe third or fourth in the U.S. Open one year. Beat Tomataka Koji earlier today, 9-5. Fine got through without losing a rack, 9-0 against Edward Epperson. Well, World champion fine. Yeah, Niels definitely knows he's got to be on his game against Donnie. Donnie actually finished second in Turning Stone this year, I believe, in the last event against Jason Shaw. That's an event that, of course, isn't the caliber of this event, but does carry some very, very good players and some champions as well. It's got a long history too, hasn't it? A lot of heritage to that tournament. That's right. Okay, funny little shot here if he's rolling it. This position I was talking about, he's, did he get enough bump on the six? He did. Big news. You're a uh Vitoranta is now on the hill against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. It looked as though maybe a World Cup winner from Spain had weathered the storm. And he may yet, but he's going to have to win the last two racks now. Well, he's off to the loser's side. Now Shane looking at coming, which side of the eight do I want to come? It looks like he doesn't want to float between the eight and four. A little dangerous with the side there, so he's going to come out to the center. Take a little cut shot. A little let up on the swing there. I don't know if you noticed it, Michael, but Shane sometimes, you know, gets a little quick with the back swing and has a little let up into impact, and that's what we had there. Yeah, it was very apparent, and we can see it there again on the replay, and it showed in the outcome of the shot. And really fortunate enough for Shane, it was a pretty easy shot. You do that on a more difficult shot, you usually don't make the ball. I think he's got to contact either the six or the eight here. Watch out for the side pocket with the cue ball. I think he's cut off. I think he's cut off and even worse, he's a little bit on a kiss trying to run the cue ball safe. I think he can't avoid the kiss, but it's touchy. He may go for this bank here. Pulling the cue ball with low right English. You know, this kind of bank here, if you hit it high, it's hard to hang it, and it comes to the end rail if you miss. Just don't hit it low to the bottom rail. Oh, wow, that's hard to do. For Usually wants to hit the pocket and go in from that angle or get back out to the center. Huge moment of opportunity now for Fefalova. If he had offered her at the start to be only two behind after eight racks, she would have been very pleased with that prospect, one would imagine. And she's got the chance here. You could see that six ball caught that point just right to flatten it out and make the six kind of hold up near the pocket. Now, be aggressive here. Don't just kind of dink this in. Come one rail towards the seven with the cue ball. At least get to where about the eight's at. 
somewhat like that, and that'll do. Huge moments in the match, this. Got to feel it's an opportunity she must take. But when she's had situations like this in this match, Jeremy, she's been pretty clinical, you would have to say. Yeah, you know, she surrendered at the table on a difficult jump shot, fouling, you know, with a narrow gap to go by the six. I think it's been the break that slowed her down more than anything when she's had an open shot. Really solid. This is just high with a hair left English. And this is all about how you like to shoot the shots. I mean, you can hit a little downward on the ball if you want, but your touch goes away. Normally, it's just high, like I said, with a hair up left. And a smart shot. Not the landslide many people might have been expecting. Nothing like it at the moment, in fact. Shane Van Boning looks like he was going to make it four racks in a row. But broke down, and Fefalova has capitalised to pull back to only two behind now. It's 5-3. Her husband, Tyler Steyer, is struggling, though. 4-1 down against Lucas Fracasso Werner. Thomas Kaplan is now 6-1 up on Cash Keaton. Loho Sum is a 3-2 lead over Juan Carlos Exposito. Chang Young Lin now leading 6-1 over Sandra Kant. Ernesto Dominguez has broken his duck against Omar Al Shaheen. He now trails 4-1. Victor Zielinski 6-3 up on Corey Jewell. Eklan Kachi may be getting to grips with things at last against Vitaly Patsura. He now leads 7-5. And Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, as we've been saying, is 8-7 down against Yara Vitoranta. Back here, it's 5-3. There's that one on the side. The two's going to come available, I think. It certainly is. So a missed four ball early. Maybe Shane took his eye off of. Margaret took advantage of getting out, put a break and run together. Now a missed six ball position. Miss Bank, she gets out. She has a chance to put another break and run together. That's how you get back in these matches. Yeah, she had a break and run to draw level earlier at 2 all. Should say, of course, it's not really been mentioned because I think most people were expecting Bamboni to win this comfortably. She would play her husband in winner's qualification if they both got through, echoing what we saw with uh, Josh and Pia at the European Open back in August. And we understand that's her good luck charm. What sort of animal is that now? Is that a bear or a dog? Or? Uh, I think it's a dog, yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, most of it, yeah, it's just a, a brindle, uh, if you know what that is, the type of uh, skin configuration where they have the multiple colors in there. I had absolutely no idea when I brought that up. I was clearly in the company of a dog expert. Well, I've got five at home. Oh, so, right. Yeah. You've got as many dogs at home as Shane Van Boney has U.S. Open trophies. Yeah, probably. It'll be a close contest on who gets our sixth, I guess. But, yeah, she's in a great spot here. Just, you know, a little preference here on how you want to play it. I kind of like going forward with just a hair check, getting that nice natural angle to come across off the six. Looks like she's kind of stunning. You know, she kind of rolled a little... A little in between, but now she may have to draw the ball more. Yeah, which is definitely the case. She goes forward a little more there, Michael. She gets a real natural rolling angle kind of to come back, which, again, is a little preference. She's got to pay attention to the speed. Watch out, corner pocket. She's going to be okay, but... That's the thing when you have to get into the ball to move it a little bit more, you lose accuracy a little easier, I think. It's 
Con Hill Hill now between Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Yara Vitaranta. doing a lot of what you know the top players would like to be doing um, with this break format putting a break and run together after winning a game now she's going to do it again that's exactly the formula to win matches and pull off upsets well, a couple of minutes ago we were looking at her good luck charm and talking about it no luck required there her second break and run of the match She's won two in a row for the second time in the match. And now trails the world champion by just one at 5-4. So another look at the scores. As I've said, FSR and Vitoranta now gone hill-hill. Victor Zielinski, 7-3 up on Corey Jewell. Chang Yun Lin has a 7-1 lead over Sandra Kant. Niels Fine has won the opener against Donnie Mills. Chris Reinhold now 4-2 in front against Thomas Haas. Going well for Lucas, for Casso Werner at 5-1 against Tyler Steyer. Even better for Thomas Kaplan of Poland with a 6-1 lead over Cash Keaton. You see some of the scores going through there. You can keep an eye on your favourites. This is the loser side we're now looking at. Remember, if you get beaten at that stage, you're out. Robert Frost, who we were talking about earlier. I know you rate him highly. Jeremy, 6-2 in front against Dakari Turnquest. What a story unfolding here for the second time today involving SVB. Only one in it now. Yeah, missed that one ball. And it's almost like occasionally she gets a little quick, like trying to create power. Um, and it kind of works against you that way a little bit. But nothing easy here for SVB, especially a 5-4 scoreline and coming off a mistake a few games ago. And I'll tell you, you know, Tyler, I don't think probably is struggling over there. I'm guessing Lucas just probably isn't giving him a lot of time at the table. What he did to his Chinese Taipei opponent in the first uh, first round after trailing just kind of sat the man down in his chair for some time. All right, really got to get a lot into this to work the cue ball down to the bottom rail and then back up for the two. I tell you, couldn't have set up better for him anyways. That is what you call absolute perfection. Yeah, well, Shane, if you ever watch him practice, he'll practice probably the first two or three hours with a similar shot, shooting it with a lot of speed. Coming off the end rail with it now, still a little tricky here. You may have to play this two in the corner just to hold position on the three. Good call. Now he's, in the course of those two shots, already carved out a very good chance here to reassert himself and go two clear again. Now you talked about Shane, you know, it being a good thing that he's played some close matches and some kind of unique pressure. If you ever talk to Shane, he's a, he's a, I don't even know how to, really state it but he's a true sportsman of the game he 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 would like the tournaments to be set up to where it's tough match right from the get every match and let's see who can who can really play the best from there look at his run through the single elimination stage in the world championship as early as the last 64 11 9 against Barham Lotfi and the famous comeback from 10 3 to beat Mika Imminent 11 10 and even after that he had a couple of 11 8 in a row against Copen Yi Chang Yung Lin Really put it up to him on that Saturday night. And it was the semi-final and the final were probably his most comfortable matches in that single elimination stage against Kazakis 11-7 and then Ocean 13-6. Yeah, well, traditionally, you know, he's done so well in the US Open because it's more of the setup he wants, the highest pressure, usually the tougher conditions, the tougher layouts and that's where he really feels like his advantage is. And I couldn't agree more, to be honest with you. Let's 
played a couple of nice shots early on to create the good chance here. And we've been lost two in a row. Shane Van Boning really needed to win the 10th rack, and he has. He's too clear once again now at 6-4. Still no white smoke emerging from table 18. That Hill Hill finish between Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Yera Vitoranta. Ernesto Dominguez has just won the seventh rack to pull it back to 5-2 down against Omar Al Shaheen. Loho Sum and Juan Carlos Exposito level at 3 all. Chris Reinhold now just one in front of Thomas Hass at 4-3. Thomas Kaplan 7-1 up on Cash Keaton. And Tyler Styers got one back against Lucas Fracasso Werner. He now trails 5-2. Boning needs three more. Yeah, one on the side. And hit a little high. May have gotten a friendly kiss there, keeping the cue ball on the table, and he's absolutely perfect now to extend that lead. And after the last opener on the one ball he made, this one much different. Very easy to pocket the one, just about gaining that position on the three. Wanted to get a little more out of that, but should be okay. Very natural to come across. You figure him to gain two rails with the cue ball here. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz had to go to the one lost side of the draw on his way to the UK Open final in London back in May. Well, he's not going there this time, at least not yet because he's come through against Yera Vitoranta. He's just won that deciding rack, so he survives 9-8. And will now play Janiuski or Michael Schneider in winner's qualification. He's gotten pretty straight here, maybe fallen actually away from the six of hair. I don't think that'll change any decision to just draw the cue ball back, maybe a foot to 18 inches. And Shane's always a serious customer at the table, but I'll tell you, no matter this outcome here, Margaret should take this as a compliment because I, what I see is a, a you know, a hundred percent focus from Shane here, making sure nothing bad goes, nothing bad happens, and gets Margaret back to the table on a mistake. thing they actually have in common I would say is that they both treat every shot with great respect I've noticed with Fethelova she's maintained the same rhythm throughout whether it's one of the more challenging shots or one that's very routine and that's the way to do it isn't it yeah that's like I said earlier going through your process your routine however you want to label it you're always going to realize it's hill hill you're always going to realize it's a tough shot but it just lessens it a little bit and uh as you keep doing that, you really what, what happens is you start to rely on that routine and it becomes a very good thing. Shane Van Boning led 5-2, got pulled back to 5-4, but he's three clear once again after running out from the break in rack 11. He's just two away now from victory at 7-4. Chang Young Lin has won 9-1 against Sandra Kant. So he'll now play the winner of Nicolas De Leon and Francesco Candela. The Italian has won the opening rack in that one. Victor Zielinski has beaten Corey Jewell 9-3 and will now play Daniel Massiol, who was a 9-5 winner, over Jeff Beckley. Looks like John Moore is going to start another match soon, so he's had a little time to recoup after that. 
Big missed eight ball at Hill Hill against Roberto Gomez. You have to tip your hat to the pool players, right? Mentally, they have to be so strong. Coming off big wins, big losses, getting right back in the box. And it doesn't get any easier for your, as far as your opponents. Okay, two balls going to work out fine for Shane. Everything open again. So should get extended on that lead. I don't think the nine's in the way. Of course, the camera can fool us a lot of times. Well, that camera shot there made me think otherwise, but. Oh, yeah. Definitely he's going to shoot at that, even if he has to jump it or swerve it just a skosh. Interesting now, he wanted to gain an angle to draw up behind the four to play it in the same pocket as the three. Now I think he just levels out, rolls the three in, taking the four up long. Good thing for Shane is the five's near. So really just burying this three and four is the main objective. And caught a little thin, so he's going to have more angle on this four. I was saying that Ackland Kachi looked to have taken control against Vitaly Patsura. Less so now. It's now 7 all. It's been going for a really long time over on table 25. It's a confidence booster, not only for right here and now, but that type of shot seems to come up later in the event a lot. And running that ball down the rail past the side is definitely going to make a difference in a match later in this event. So it looks like more of what we had in the last rack. All very straightforward this time. But this match has certainly not been that. It was 5-4, remember. At no stage has Gamboni been four clear. Surely he's going to be in a moment. Going to draw up above, it looks like. All right, played for the side. Keeping it simple. Second time in the match, he's won three in a row. Shane Van Boning, a bit later than we might have expected, has made it to the hill at 8-4. Consider that he finally got that world title back in April, Jeremy, if he was to at last claim that elusive US Open record and win it for an unprecedented sixth time. You know him pretty well, but I think you probably don't need to know him all that well to know that he would surely regard this as the greatest year of his career if he could do both of those things in 22. Yeah. And I don't want to feel this way, but I, I agree with you totally, but I'm afraid the guy might just, you know, get in his boat and go off into the sunset and we might lose him for a few years. You really think? No, no, no. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I know he is a guy that definitely wants to play some more, but it's not going to be till 60 years old or anything like that. So, yeah, of course, getting that sixth title. You know, him, it would probably make him just want to try and get the seventh and and maybe a second world nine ball. You know, he's very motivated by, you know, the incredible events that have taken place this year and look to just improve. So, but I do think if that wasn't the case, these events, how incredible they've become and how it looks like they're going to improve and improve, I think Shane would consider retirement a little earlier than uh, we might think. I think, though, even if he was to play on just to the age of 50, and I think there's every reason to believe he'd still be at something like this level throughout that time. Think of the stats he could have by the end of his career. I mean, for example, he might have played in 25 Moscone Cups by then. Right. And you think right. of the numbers he might have 
at the finish of his career. His career prize money as well. He's already on about $2 million. With all these big money events, that could be up maybe $4 million. Double Efren Reyes by the end of his career. The numbers could be astronomical if he can keep the hunger. And every sign is that winning the World Championship, as you indicated there, has not diminished that hunger even slightly. Well, I think everything is adding up towards that hunger. I think the World Nine Ball Championships was like the icing, you know, on the cake as far as he likes, like I said, he likes it being tough from the beginning of the tournament, and that's going to get more so as we move on in professional pool with matchroom involved, and the, the prize money is going to go up undoubtedly in my mind, and just a lot of things are adding up to keep him motivated, and I think even more so the, the young players. I think that has a lot to do with it. Well, he would be really excited, wouldn't he, if a new generation of players were to come through and make the Americans that bit more competitive in the Moscone. That, you know, he's only won it three times in his whole career. He would love to change that stat. And if a team can be put together that would give him the chance of doing that, well, that in itself is a motivation to keep going and keep working. Wow, nice shot there. He had to play that to the upper part of the pocket. Maybe in a player noticed that, but if you watch the replay, the two went into the top side, and that was essential to avoid that scratch. And Yeah, it just wouldn't be a U.S. Open without SVB, it seems. Watch where the two goes in here, Michael, to the left side of the pocket a little bit. That was to avoid the scratch, and what a shot. Worth mentioning Joey Tate, who we saw come so close to beating Van Boning earlier today. He's in action at the moment on the one-loss side, but 5-4 down, perhaps surprisingly, against Stephen Folan of Canada. That's just race to eight. see how he plays this guess he's gonna come three rails to the back side of the nine top rail side rail about the middle of the end rail come right at the six with the cue ball just for some short side position oh he played it light that was surprising because you know there's not a lot of room there kind of coming in at that angle. If you come back behind the nine and come up into the six ball, you have a lot more options it seems, but he's not going to get frisky or any risk here. He wants to just play the safety. I'm not sure he got it. Seems a long time ago already since we saw Dalibor Nikolin from Serbia, the part-time tennis instructor playing Carlo Beato, the defending champion, in the opening match on table one. And he'll be lying in wait for Margaret Fefalova on the one loss side, unless she can pull off a miraculous recovery. Well, I think she's got a piece of this green six to clip it and run the cue ball a couple rails, maybe behind the seven. Now the thing is, can she get the six in a good place? Because she can't afford to hit this very thick and get behind the seven. Oh, she played it thin. So she's going to need a good speed. Not bad. Eklund Kachi was on the hill at last against Vitaly Patsura. 8-7. That one's been going on for about two hours. Good deal more, actually. Shane just trying to play a, a soft safety is what we'd call it. Of course, you're never getting the snooker, just trying to make things tough. I wouldn't doubt that, that Margaret goes for this long rail bank. She could track the cue ball behind the eight. A couple rails, but the six is going to be playable with the jump cue most likely, if not giving up a little gap there on a straight in shot. I like banking it by the nine myself. You get a little bit of a bigger pocket, it could glance off the nine.
I think if she goes for the lower left, she makes it myself. That's what I think. We didn't see it, but we heard it drop. We'll get a proper look from here. Maybe she's playing without pressure at the moment. She knows she's done well in this match anyway, even getting the four racks. Nothing to lose from this situation. Everyone she wins. That's a better gloss on the performance. Yeah, I don't really recall an open miss. I could be wrong, that's for sure. But like I said, mostly it's been the break that slowed her down. And she's had two break and runs as well. And she's still out there, only three behind. It's still a massive ask to turn this around. But she's now trailing 8-5. the one thing you want more than anything else in her situation is to go out there and feel you've given your best and, and not feel that you've not been able to adjust to the circumstances and the setting and you want to go out there and show that you can cope with being on the big stage and that stands to you and there's been absolutely nothing to suggest otherwise from her. Yeah, I haven't really seen tentative. That's, you know, being a player when I've lost and been tentative, that's been the ones that have been harder to deal with. You know, swing the cue, you know, give yourself a chance, right? She's definitely done that. And she can, you know, add another break and run like she's had twice already in this match after winning a game. You never know. Really, even if it was to finish now, I think she'd walk away from this match with no regrets whatsoever. Still punching. Yeah, because she still has matches to play, even if she is, you know, not in a position to win this match, and that's not a good sign there. Nice starter for Shane, and a six ball that's awfully funny, attached somewhat to the nine, but you got to believe these first few to get started are pretty simple. Greatest performance of Van Boning's career or even his year by a long way, Jeremy. But he'll have no regrets really to take away from this either. Doesn't look to be anything wrong with his game at all. No, I think really the the four ball was up in the corner. He just took his eye off of it. Wasn't really like a, you know, it's one thing when you deliver the cue and you're really upset with the delivery. That can be alarming. But the two mistakes I saw were ones he can leave behind pretty easily. Because you could tell he had some difficult racks in this match. It wasn't like all easy ones, right? And Shane, again, I think is the best in the world when the ball's laid difficult. Still to this day, I believe that. Another winner to report. Omar Al Shaheen has beaten Ernesto Dominguez 9-4. A nice little two rail angle here to bump the 6-9 open and have a shot on the five. Just like that. Should be over now. Yeah. And just that simple little situation there explains a lot about our new break rule. You know, when for years it seemed like where we never talked about guys having to open balls up during the run. Uh, it seemed like it was all about being very efficient with the open table because there was hardly any clusters, hardly any situations, or not that often anyways. Much different now. He's gotten a little funny here. I think maybe a high ball, he goes by the eight, but if he's going to take any chance there, he'll probably just draw out of this and take a longer shot on the seven. really unload into this draw stroke. We'll see.
Oh, he played it with a little inside running English. So still a little decision here. Does he come inside the nine on the top side or does he come with a little high ball and try and float two rails you know, below the nine? It looks like he's going to come tight of the nine, catching the third rail on the side rail. That's got to slow down a little bit. That could fall below the eight, get a little funny. No, he's all right. What a rare thing it is in big time sport to play a wife and husband in consecutive rounds. It may yet happen if Tyler Starr can turn around his current 5-3 deficit against Lucas Fracasso Werner. And it looks as though the wife of that couple is about to fall to the world champion, but Margaret Fefalova has every reason to feel positive about the way she's played. She was only one behind at 5-4. Had a couple of break and runs. Well, of course, Tyler has his hands full, but if he loses that, that means that Margaret and Tyler are kind of set up to play on the one-loss side. Shane Van Boning won't be going to the one-loss side. Not yet, anyway. He's come through. A tough challenge for the second time today. He's beaten Margaret Fefalova by nine racks to five and proceeds to the winner's qualification round in that quest for his record-breaking sixth U.S. Open title. So the action will now be from the loser side. Next up on table one, and if you uh, want to enjoy that with Phil Yates and Carl Boys, that will be coming along in a few minutes' time. As ever, I look at the stats. Everything looking pretty good for Feffel over there. Very good performance from her. As you can see, just one missed pot in the whole match. And did everything to suggest that there are very good times ahead for her. Bamboning, though, the winner by nine, racks to five. <laughs>